could do a little something called streamer myths and tips fishing tying and guiding with pictures and video I think it'll be pretty cool All right, for weather systems, I just want to start out by saying that my two biggest client caught fish have been on the absolute worst day I could imagine, giant sun. Um, you, you want not giant sun, you want cloud cover, mornings, evenings, um, low water, low water, like rocks that we hadn't seen in years type low water. And uh, you, you want water that's kind of elevated. Um, high water events was something that I always looked for, uh, especially in the spring creeks, to get those those nocturnal fish to come out from their <clears throat> log jams. They stay during the day. Uh, clear water, gin clear, and cold. Uh, I, I'm less, I, I'm not going to, I'm going to plead a certain degree of the fifth on um, temperature. So much of my fishing is done, so much of my fishing and my learning has been done on tailwaters. Um, so while we do have temperature variations from the upper 40s to the low 60s, it's nothing like the free stones where you're going from um, 32, 33 and, and you know, swinging up into the, the mid sixties. Um, so uh, the other, um, client best from my boat was we had black clouds coming over the mountains. And I mean, within 15 minutes after catching this fish, this dude was in the front of the boat, completely soaking wet. Cause he forgot his rain gear. Cause he's a child. Shout out Corey. <laughs> Um, so we had those black clouds rolling in the barometer was just going into the basement and it, you do want to look for that. It, it can be tough with you fish when you can fish, right? Um, I started seeking that out cause I found that on the front end of storms, wade fishing in, in the, you know, Midwest, mid Atlantic rust belt, um, it just, the humidity made guides freeze up a little less for casting when it was 33 degrees it, it wasn't as windy it was just more comfortable and then because that was the more comfortable time to be fishing i was fishing that more i started seeing some patterns with being out there on the front end of low pressure fronts uh, before you know you you get that barometer dipping down and then when it's coming up, that's generally intraday, there's all of this intraday, in a day, there's all this stuff. But the trend as a front is coming in is going to be going down. Maybe it'll flatten out going down. And then when those high pressure fronts come in, high wind, big sun, um, fuck all that. And partially because casting sucks more. Um, it's less comfortable to be out there when it's cold. It, you get dehydrated when it's warm because it's not humid. So I started seeing all this stuff basically from uh, when do I want to fish and then and then started seeing fish behavior because of that. Um, big water was on this this other fish. Uh, we have no generation is 240 CFS. Uh, on is... 1700 and then there's like two stages of auxiliary um so even from 240 to 17 you're you're looking at almost 9x the volume uh of water and it, it happens you know it's not like a, a rain event here it's it's not like a wave comes in but over the course of 10 or 15 minutes 
your 240 in kind of bony conditions goes to uh, a ripping river. Um, then there's 2400, which is, yeah, it feels kind of like the 1740. It's maybe a little pushier in certain places, but a lot of the rapids start to get a little smoother. And then there's the 3300, which they do for whitewater, um, they call it the recreational release. And that changes the river. Um, everything is just moving. The rapids are, I, I sail, you know, I'm, I'm fishing sideways and backwards while going over these ledges that are impassable in low water. Um, because there's just, there's so much water creating a cushion over everything. And so it was in that 3,300, um, it was a perfect cast, you know, all this, everything, everything was lined up, monster fish. Um, and then the other one, it, it was the worst. And on that day, not just that fish, he had hooked and lost one on the same bank structure, uh, maybe 20 yards upstream as we were moving down. And then that day, the the amount of big fish behavior that I ended up seeing, and I had a guy fishing gear, um, th this dude was fishing fly, the amount of big fish activity we saw was, it was completely, in, like something had to have been going on. And, and I can attribute that to a bunch of different stuff. It was spring, there's shad moving up. Um, you know, the moon was in, phase one or two it had been super low water for a long time so the feed was kind of on anyways regardless of high water or not um but regardless the the whole like these are the right conditions to streamer fish um there are ideal conditions to streamer fish absolutely it's not even nine times at 9.5 99 percent of the time i'm going to tell you that you're going to get more activity when it's cloudy and the more socked in you get the more disruption so it's not just cloudy it's all of a sudden gray the more the lower the cloud ceiling is the farther down you get in that barometer the longer that flat is before it dips back up yes those are the best times to be streamer fishing uh have i had days with all of those and perfect water where it sucks ass and i'm talking not seeing a fish move for a full day yes i've had more than one of those brutal part of the brutal part is that you have all these conditions where i'm so acclimated to seeing i mean it's almost babe ruth out there of it's happened that's happened way more than once where you get super juicy water with a good caster and it's like put that thing over there and do what you've been doing and you know there's a fish on um you spend enough time out there and and fish this way enough you can kind of track um where you're going to be seeing activity with high degree of confidence but yeah have i had days where not only is the shock only not happening that's most of the time um but nothing and i mean nothing from fantastic anglers. Yes, that's happened a handful of times. Um, generally, we're, we're, we're able to, to pick up a couple. Um, but have I done it myself? Have I done it with, you know, fishing with buddies? We're going out four, six hours. And not as it just, uh, it's a blank, but it's a blank with no movement. And the conditions are just absolutely perfect. And then yeah have i had the days where everything's bad and we're still out and we're gonna hammer it um and end up having a pretty damn good day water's low sun's big we're passing you know 16 boats just dragging lead on the bottom with bugs um and sticking a few really nice brown trout yeah those have happened too so just because it's one set of conditions versus another in no way should dictate whether or not you um, you go out and fish. And then if you are going out and fish and guiding, if you are planning to streamer fish and it's just, it's too sunny or whatever, dude, you got to give it a shot. Give, give catching a fish 
on a streamer a shot as long as you would give nymphing a shot. I mean, people do that for eight, nine hours a day. Do that with streamer fishing, and one, you'll get better at casting and retrieving. Uh, two, you'll probably end up catching a fish. Um, so weather systems, yes, there are ideal ones, 100%. Um, can it be done in all conditions? Absolutely. When it's really bad, do you need something else going on? Probably. But the windows open up and, and you have to be out there and your fly has to be in the water. When there's a, a fish that is wanting to go near your fly and, and that window opens up. Um, so, you know, Summary there would be if you're planning fishing around weather, front end of low pressure fronts when that barometer is falling or flat. If you just if you see that temperature is rising, um, and then you know what, the, the next day it, it's going to be 60s, 60s, and the next day 40, and then sunny, and th this is 65, 68, and cloudy, and then maybe over here was. Uh, 62 and partly cloudy and then you know 65 68 fully cloudy fully crowded cloudy with chance of showers fish that day uh, 40 and windy with high Sun just don't fish that day I mean if you if you're going if that's your day to fish then go out and hammer it um, but if you're planning on it you want the the front end of those low pressure fronts um, but again, like I, I just said it somewhat accidentally, if that's your day to fish, that 40 degree day with the big wind and high sun, um, I wouldn't be sitting here telling you all this stuff if I didn't fish so many of those days. If I didn't find out that there, the difference in relative humidity in the air made a difference in how ice forms and stays onto guides and how that drier air um makes the ability to have it come off and and the speed with which it freezes uh that dry air it makes it real shitty and, and the the humid conditions um which is kind of weird there's there's more water in the air um i'm gonna stop going down that rabbit hole but i wouldn't have been figuring all this other stuff if I didn't personally, hands, my eyes, my body, if I didn't personally go out and fish all of the shitty stuff, and I still do that today, if, if there are conditions that just look, I don't know, different or really bad, I go out and fish. Um, part of that is because I wanna be able to understand this river and this area more and these fish better and see what might happen in conditions I've never been exposed to. Um, then the other part is if I end up getting a trip and, you know, these guys are really excited for fishing and, and it just sucks ass. I want to be able to figure out something that we can do or with confidence say, I'm sorry, it, it is just not going to happen as opposed to going out and praying um, because I don't want to cancel the trip. So you, you got to go out and fish to, to, to truly learn and with confidence say one thing or another. You got to go out and experience all, all the bad stuff along with the good stuff. And then you have this comparison point to say, oh, that's good because, you know, X, Y, and Z are different compared to the bad. And then you start to piece those together and pattern it a little bit and still be wrong, but just be wrong, you know, a little less um and, and that you know you're you're still wide but it's not wide left right you're you're getting closer and the closer we can get the more fish we're catching and um or at least we're understanding why we're not catching fish anyways ignore the weather if if you're if that's going to limit you if it's not limiting you and you can schedule um cloudy days I don't think I have a transition from that one, but I do have a client, so I'm going to go fish.